Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, another big show coming your way tonight. Plenty of your catches of the week as Snapper continue to dominate. Cod season opens on Thursday and Trelly shows off five of his best lures for those of you keen for a cod this weekend. We have a complaint that Coronella isn't busy enough. You'll find out what a fish motel is and the annual King George Whiting survey is well underway. All that and more, so let's get into it with a big welcome to the man who travels by kayak, Adam Ring. Welcome, Ads. Thanks, Dave. Absolutely pumped for the cod opening. It's uh, it's really nice to see and think about something that's not snapper or whiting being the coastal Victorianites that we are, but cod season. It's shaping up to be a cracker and I'm sure we'll talk about it with Trelly a bit later on, but I'm excited and I'm not even around there. It is it is good and I know we've had Eildon all year round, but uh, it's the excitement of every other river, every other lake in Victoria and into New South Wales that people will be excited about and it is cod opening on Thursday. It's also a very big welcome to the man all the way from Shepparton, Stephen Victor Trelfel. Welcome, Trelly. Uh, thank you very much, John Malcolm. <laughs> no worries, Trelly. <laughs> so formal. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> middle names, he likes to bring them up. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And it is. Just it's making a great sure topic. everyone knows your middle names, Victor. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah, I know. Okay. It'd be uh, like an early Christmas for you down in Shep, Trelly, wouldn't it? Maybe cod opening coming up? Well, I think that all the stars are sort of aligned at the moment because we've had you know, a little bit of flooding up our way. Sorry. Mariah Carey. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> well, the stars are aligned. The, the, uh, What's that got to do with Maura she, Carey? She's oh. a star. She's yeah. not doing too well. Oh. No. She's too good to divorce. Yeah, flip. she's no good. Anyway. <laughs> she wasn't caught out here. <laughs> so, yep. It's, it's, we've had a little bit of flooding up our way, which has uh, actually gone down. Around the Shepparton area, we're getting some fantastic reports. Normally, they'd put environmental flow down around about this time of year, but obviously, yeah. we've had the flooding, so it's not going to happen. So, we're going to have, and I term it, a dry bank event. So, um, so all goods looking fantastic up our way we're gonna along the Murray. We're going to talk about what a dry bank event is later in the show. Yep. Um, I know you probably covered it last year, but we'll cover it again this year. So, Trelly, um, are, are people... I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people that go to the Cod Classic this weekend yep. uh, at, at Malwala, and it was at three thousand anglers. Around about, yeah. Around about three thousand yeah. anglers. So, you know, so yeah. it's a, it's a great competition, and it gets everyone excited to kick off the season, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's right. Um, it's not like you know, like the tea tree comp, <coughs> the snapper is held. You know, uh, obviously, after a couple of months of people are out there doing the snapper thing, but it's it's a celebration of the start, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's 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 sort of it's, it's sort of like the the old duck opening. You know, the duck opening back in the the uh, 60s and 50s, they used to stop the tennis, they stopped the cricket and all that, and it's something for duck opening. Yeah. Nowadays, it's it's the cod opening. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it is. It's just one of those things on the calendar. Get your mate, we go, we go fishing the cod opening. Yep. You know? Plenty to talk about about cod later on the show, but boys, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano, providing reliable, trustworthy, quality fishing gear for your enjoyment. Now here's this one to kick it off, right? Mark writes to me and he goes, Hi guys, unfortunately I sent this to the wrong email address last week. Uh, need to redeem myself with the missus. Uh, caught by <laughs> Kerry Lay, a 11.2 oh. kilogram oh. snapper on if a pilchard off St Kilda <coughs> last Sunday morning, which I think he means the Sunday before because he sent it to the wrong email address. Kerry, give him the flick. Seriously, Mark, <laughs> get, your, get your email address. You know what, though, that is a cracker of a fish. In, Mark, in, him anyway. in Mark's defence, yeah, yeah. everyone will wait for an 11.2 kilo snapper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 His fingers were probably yeah. trembling yeah. on the keyboard uh, because 11.2, I mean, look at look at the tail on it. Yeah. It's, that, that's a, a, yeah. a bigger snapper you'll see. And the photo, finally, because photos are tough for some of these big fish. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a 100% justice. The trouble, is, the trouble, is, the trouble is, Mark, you don't send it to whydoncare.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My missus caught a bigger fish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, let's keep moving along. Chris, Chris Preston uh, landed a beautiful little snapper off Hastings, just a typical size fish that's around at the moment, that three to four kilos. And well done to Chris. Yeah, and that's, that's a yeah. fish. Early, early morning, it looks yeah. like. 
like. So really, really exciting because those fish are starting to school up mm. around Hastings, mm. which we yeah. saw towards the back end of the season yeah. last season. So that's um that's a great sign with those fish yeah. schooling up. Bit yeah. small, Chris, but anyway, that's <laughs> fine too. <laughs> I tell you what, if there's a land-based option in Western Port, you can't go past Stockyard Point. Correct. And uh, Greg Mitchell landed this cracker, 86 centimetres. Hasn't got a there's weight, proof. but That's 86 nice. centimetres. I mean, gummies and snapper off that yeah. off that uh, area, Stockyard Point, and Low what cracker tide. fish. Yeah, so what is it with you guys? You're half centimetres and half weight. What's what's the go with you, oh, Spokes, Danny? I don't know. Just, oh, kept, yeah. just kept me an interesting trolley, you know how we yeah. roll. Yeah, it's like, so you can't say... Mine was bigger than the other because one had a weight, one had a length. No, it's because his, it, his mate got a six and a half kilo fish. He wasn't sure whether it competed, so <laughs> yeah. it just said it's in the centre. <laughs> do you know, no, do you know what I think it's about? It's whether you own scales or not. Yeah, yeah well, that's true. true too. Yeah, because <laughs> right. everyone can measure the length, but this not true. everyone's got a pair of scales. So. Yeah. But I think when you get a big fish, you want to weigh it and you want to know yeah. is it a seven or eight or a yeah. nine or. Yeah, um, you do. You know, or in yeah. Travis Dowling's case, I mean, under a kilo. He, he wanted his in grams. That reminds me, <laughs> next week, yeah. next week, put yeah. on one of our topics for discussion, yeah. the benchmark for all of our popular species, snapper, 20-pound, whiting. Oh, the benchmark. Like what's the, the, cod. What's the, the ben yeah. That's the benchmark yeah. to when it becomes a stonker. Trap. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. It, barrel, it, uh, 100 kilo, barrel. Yep. Yeah, barrel yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Benchmark. Great, Whiting, great idea. Yeah. 50 centimetres. We might start a bit of a Facebook comp during yes. the week and try mm. and get some Send them in during the week so. and we'll mm. just we'll yeah. put what them in on the, the show next what week. What would be the um, benchmark for a trout? 10, 10 pound. Ooh. 10 pound. 10 pound. I'll be up with six. So th so, so yeah, a 10 no, pound saying that's when it'd be anything above 10 pounds like out of control? Yeah, because there used to be those wine bottles that were around there, the musket wine, and it had all the benchmark ones. It was a metre barra, a metre cod, Really? Uh, it was a, a 10 pound trout and there was a couple of other species and you used to be able to buy the wine. There we go. Send them in yeah. during the week and we'll have a list of yeah. the benchmark uh, yeah. either Scientist, weight or yeah. length yeah. Well, for, for all that popular species. I remember tried to book me in town for selling alcohol. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't be the first time. But, uh, <laughs> let's keep going. Lachlan Hayes, he uh, headed out on Ace Fishing Charters, our good friend Steve, Steve Johnson. Well done, Steve. And I tell you what, if you want to go with someone who has had 87 years experience on Western Port <coughs> and still has his depth sounder set to feet. So it's, still, um, it's got the paper go, one, isn't it? Go to, it's still, oh. It is the old crap. <laughs> Another one of feet. Uh, Lachlan Hayes, lovely 5.8 kilo gummy aboard Steve Johnson's Ace Fishing Charters. Well Get done, on Lockie. it. Um, yeah. Another one sent in, Hi Kramer. Uh, Cherie writes, Hi Kramer, just wanted to share these pics of my son Caleb with his fish we caught off Frankston on Sunday morning. The smile says it all. Let's have a look at Caleb. Now, he did get a snapper as well. I didn't show that. Um, but the flat it's what a That's a cracker flat It's a great flat um, And I'll tell you what, I'd take those two fillets any day over yeah. the snapper. <laughs> um, yes. But Cherie, thank you very much for sending Caleb's photo. That's absolutely fantastic. Ooh. Let's keep it the kids. Um, a lovely 43 centimetre whiting. In fact, real it's fired a bit this week, boys. Look at that. Um, that's nice. That's Mia's mum. I can't remember her mum's name, but Mia's mum sent that in. Mia was just holding it there. A PB for the mum. So a lovely 43 centimetre. That's, that's a great mm, whiting. That's a cracker of a whiting. That's a great whiting. That's I just reckon uh, a bit of warmer water around real, so mm -hmm. um, yeah. the old King George might be just loving that area yeah, at the moment. Yeah. So. What, 18 degrees? No, not quite, oh. really. Not quite? Nah. Be just pushing 17 now. Mm. It's it's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's a little still bit of more and so, and uh, let's get back onto the Murray Cod because it wouldn't be the same if we didn't have a Lake Eildon Murray Cod. Gary Norton got up there oh, with guess. his dad, yeah. and uh, just opened the account this year for seventy-eight centimeters or nine kilos. It's a nice fish. Um, so he measured it both, Charlie. He did. Um, but yeah. that's what you want to see, isn't it? It's that's a great a, fish. Yeah. yeah. What's the slot limit for cod? Uh, Fifty-five to seventy-five. Oh, so he'd have to throw that back? So I yep. don't know how he weighed it. But I'd cut the tail off and put it on the bar. Yeah. <laughs> they had one of those nets to let the scale in. Yeah, yeah. Well, you bottom jaws, yeah. No, you Can I just say, that. Gaz used to work to... for us, and if oh, there he is... He still does. He came to the cod oh, the yeah, other yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He only works for you because well, he wants to get staff discount. Well, if there's a definition, for the, <laughs> if there's a definition <laughs> in the dictionary for the nicest man alive, it's Gary yeah. Norton. He's a pearl on that bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuinely. Yeah, yeah. Second, so right. second behind Jerry, and Jerry's a long way behind. Yeah, it's clear. Um, you know, but but no. So we've had a few staff in the last few weeks. Like Cal did it the weekend before. Took mm. his dad up there because he wanted to get his dad a cod. Got his dad a cod. Gaz went up there. Took his dad up there to get a cod. He took it himself. So anyway, uh, <laughs> well played, Gaz. If, you, if you'd like yeah. to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what dad. you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV. Email your fishing pick to info at Coming up on Talking Fishing, product of the week with Trelly's favourite cod lures right after this. <laughs>
talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wear the line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. See you down and tackle world today. Product of the week. Brought to you by Tackle World. Talking fishing. And it's all about the cod catch of the week this week. Trelly has brought in five of his best, or maybe it might be a few more than five, but Trelly, over to you. Let's have a look at some of your favourite lures for cod. No worries. Now, this one here, yeah. Bassman Spinnerbaits do a, a huge range of ads of, uh, of lures, but when people walk in and they have a bit of a look along the wall, that type of thing, mm. uh, we always direct them to a couple of different particular colours. Purple probably being the main... Yeah. The main colour within the, the spectrum of the colours you see on the skirts. Um, that with black is probably uh, black and and blue and red is probably the main one. What, so why why is it purple? Because there's no yeah. natural bait that I can think of that's purple. What what is it? Because it's the sure. same in hot, hard bodies. Purple is a very popular colour, isn't it? Is. It is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So so when you're, you're right, you think of it and you say, "What's purple in the water?" So yeah. Anyway, they might just say, "Hey, never seen one of these before." Is, it, is that like it. the favourite? Colour nail polish for cod fishermen or something? Yeah. Or? <laughs> no, I was just it's, just checking. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. you're right. So it could be, yeah. but you can see you can see these lures the way they're set up, and often they'll have well, they've obviously got the, the main hook in it, and a lot of times I'll actually put another hook hook in the actual in the actual soft plastic at the yep. back here too, or not have a soft plastic at all. Hmm. But yeah, purple, black, purple, red, uh, but main purple and any colour with it. So that's probably one of the main ones. And yeah. Colorado blade over a willow. Yep. Yeah, Colorado Blade uh, gives you a, a lot more sort of sound off in the water, more vibration, and it will keep your lure high too. So if you're fishing um, reasonably sort of shallow water, you want to work them pretty shallow, uh, just a bit of a high rod tip and work those and you'll feel them really give you that feedback on the end of the rod, mm. you know, that thump, 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 as opposed to willow leaf uh, ads. Yep. A willow leaf, you use them to dive a little bit deeper, so don't offer as much resistance in the water. Would you ever fish a spinnerbait these days without a soft plastic tail? I, I would, um, but I'd still hang a hook off it because a lot of times a skirt will actually sort of hide that second hook. Yep. Yeah. So so it, it's a way of either supporting it or so giving what, it a bigger profile. So just like an profile. assist hook hanging off the second hook, uh, yeah, exactly, the first yeah. hook or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So okay. they, they place it on there. So but it, it's if you want to give it a bigger profile, a lot of times the fish will actually come up and sort of like territorially, you know, sort of hit at it. Yep. Mm. So that's why you have that hook. So a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people will say, you know, you hang that back uh, um, blade back, and they want that hook to, to sit behind that as well. Mm. So there's a few little thought patterns there. Nice number yep. two, Trelly. Number two. Now this one here, this is the old stump jumper, and you can see there a couple of colours up there. These I, I probably picked them out probably a little bit close, but they are iconic colours, and you'll see through the range of. You'll see through the range of um, anybody's sort of lure range. Thanks, Eds. Look over there. <laughs> don't normally do this section. So um, those two colours are pretty. That's that's sort of what you'd call your mulga frog. You'll see those. A lot of the a what? manufacturers will actually produce the same sort of colours, but they vary them a little bit. So that's your mulga frog. That one there. It's been around for years and years and years, even under your old flatfish and things like that. And that's sort of a variation on it. But you'll see the, the orange underneath that one. Yeah. When, when, they, when you want to have a look at one of these lures, just pop them in the water beside the boat and only run them at a, a short length so you can see what they're doing in the water. Yep. And you'll see them and you'll see that their roll But you action. can imagine being you underneath it, <coughs> Trelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can just see on the camera there. When you roll that, you've got that, you've got that, that yellow, that orange belly. So you troll, you troll them as preferred to casting? Both ca both cast and troll. Yep. Mm. But probably, probably more trolling because... It leaves one hand free for other things. <laughs> nice. nice. So you get sw swatting away flies, don't oh, yeah, you? Yeah, 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 just yeah, a can yeah. of coke or something. So, right, yeah. eh? Yep, next one. Yep, now, these ones here probably get a little more interesting. All right, now these ones here are... Uh, and look, this this shape is is very common with a lot of lure manufacturers. This is, this is actually an old mate, but it's a minnow-style shape. So you can see there, you've got your natural colour, right? So uh, that's that's... Pretty obvious as far as anything that lives in the water, like a water rat or a mouse or you know, even a snake or anything like that. Yep. And this other one here is actually it's, it's actually a clear body. 
So you get a little bit really? of sun on that. Yeah, you can't yeah. quite see it, and it's probably one of the one of the uh, the few colours that's done in a clear body. So that will actually reflect light through that green base on it, little silver spots all can over I, it. Can I have a look at that one, Charlie? Like that's nice, actually. Silver spots. That is, right. that is nice. Really <coughs> pop in the water. Yeah, and the red stripe. So that actually, yeah. um, we, we sort of call it the red fin colour, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and what brand? That's an old mate. Oh, an old mate, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep, it's got the uh, wire it's in the It's got bib. the wire all the way through. Two depths, 15 foot and 25 foot. Yep. It's actually got <laughs> a... Um, old mate, all the old mates got ball bearings in the in the guts. Yeah, all the old yeah, mates have got ball rattle. bearings, but they've also got the salt water transfer system in them. Yeah. So the bearing transfers to the back when you cast it. Yeah, you, know, you get a lot of lures when you when you cast and they pick up on a bit of wind and they'll go yep. sideways. This one will actually go a where you can like so that. Yeah. <laughs> Go sideways. Yeah, right. So you yeah. pick up on wind. <laughs> oh, pick up yeah. on wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So so that's a really interesting colour that was sort of developed and has been very, very popular. That is sensational, Charlie. Well yep. done. These ones are uh, unreal. Charlie. Yeah, now <laughs> been around this, for a long time. Yeah, now this one here, this one here is um a, a codulua. Now mm. this one's been done for probably like, probably twenty years, this guy in Shepparton. And he's got a couple. He's got a couple of different shapes in these ones, but that's just a basic purple. It's got a black stripe on Here's it. Is the purple again? Yeah, yep. purple with a black stripe. This one's got a, a blue head on it. This one, mm. and little pink underneath the front uh, and the tail. So uh, there's another one which is basically the same lure as that one there, but it's got a little uh, pink stripe in the top of it. And it's really good for your cod or even your yellow belly. It's very, mm. very popular in the yellow belly. So mm. I know I've coloured a few. I know I've covered a few colours there, but they would be uh, your go-to colours. Yeah, now, Charlie, I'm just having a look down there. You've bought a few of the yep. the Charlie specials from over the years, Lewis. That you may not necessarily pick up these days, but. Right. Yep. But iconic cod lures nonetheless. We did. What, what I did is I actually grabbed this box out of my office, running out. Tonight, yeah. and um, if you can, we can we can get a shot what up of that, that one there. Now that can we get a close up of that one? Anyone, anyone who knows uh, so on, the, on the screen, that, that's that the that other lure you were talking about. That doesn't match what <laughs> we're on the screen. Can we get a that's close okay. up of that one? Yeah. Yep, we're on this camera. I'm sure, Louie will. There we go. There, there we go. There we go. That is old. You can see that. That looks like a dolphin fish. That's that's right. He's 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 in the sanctuary. So yeah, he's only go so fast. So that's is it. You can see that's soft. Right, so it's made of rubber. Fair dinkum. Right, now you've got on here, you've got three different anchor points mm. for that for that clear bib. So you can have it at three different depths. Yeah. Now, so I'll show you the pack. What, what brand? you got, what you got you up there close? It's a Rublex. Yeah. Now, what you've got a close Imagine up on that shirt, there, Louis. Go back to the close up for us. Okay. Louis, much. the cameraman, right. he's doing a great job. While you've tonight. got that, you can see What's it the age. It's a floppy. <laughs> you can see the age of that packet there. Yeah, that price that price is in pounds. Yeah, yeah. Well it's not quite but it is but you're right. It's just <laughs> after it. That's that's nine dollars seventy cents and that would have to be Back in the seventies. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So you think of the, the price of a lure nowadays. Yeah. Uh back then you're probably on twenty dollars a week. Yeah. And you pay nine bucks for a lure. Yeah, yeah. it's just you'd be paying a hundred and well, in your case, Dave, you're paying 500 bucks for a lure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it a floppy? That's a floppy. So did they do okay. a hard version called a stiffy? Uh, well, they did. They actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sort of. No, they didn't. It was called a, uh, a dam buster. There's been a few people trying to copy that. A what? A few people trying to copy it. A dam buster. Yeah, a oh. dam buster. It was called a dam buster, yeah. yeah. But what happened was Rublex, who make um, the Ondex lures and a few of those really old iconic uh, uh, yep. redfin lures, they went out of manufacture of these things because they said, well, it only sells along the Murray River you know, and the Gold and, and, and natives and that. So, you know, it's like, why? doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, I found this one, Dave. Yeah, now, what is that? Now, that's... Custom colour, isn't it? That's or? a custom colour. That's your stump jumper. Now, stump jumper is absolutely iconic with with cod lures. Yeah. I've got some that actually go back past this with with uh, when Johnny Ellis used to make them with um, steel bibs, mm -hmm. metal bibs, hand make them. Wow. And then he went to different places, and then they were, they were, they were big through Kmart and all that places. Then went back to pro stores. But you read on the top of that day. What's that say on the top of that day? That says those eyes, eyes, eyes are working. Yeah. No, no, they're working. Don't worry about that. It cost me a lot of money. <laughs> Paul and Christy Worsling, twenty fourth of July, two thousand and four, hooked for life. Yeah. 
That was what? That was on their wedding day. Wasn't that was it? their wedding day. Um, stump jumper that they actually. A bit yeah. like a bonbon bon on the Christmas table. It was a bonbon. Yeah. There so, you go. Yeah. That's cool. So that's uh, so that's. And you can still do that today. You put an order in, you can you can actually get, get we some can, custom stuff. We can get custom lures done for you. So yeah, there so a little bit of history there. Yeah. That's great stuff. The old floppy is But haven't haven't lures come a long way though. You go from that which don't get me wrong, that's yeah. a pretty sweet lure. Oh, yeah, 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 but yeah, the finishes yeah. and and the actual shape of the lures. Yeah. But yeah. the funny thing is you could put that in the water today and probably still catch a fish. Yeah. Oh absolutely. So Charlie, absolutely. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, Tassie Devils uh, are probably a classic, but there's other lures that people change trebles to singles yep. yep they don't do that for cod to all trebles you've just presented uh, everything <coughs> bar the spinner baits all right everything from the 1970s through to yep. today is all trebles do, yep. is there any move away from trebles did you do did you, you were reading my mind as i know we actually uh, we haven't even talked about this on <laughs> stage, <laughs> we, but, haven't, we haven't oh it's but just i just something i picked cod, up on at the conference coming yeah. up in a couple of weeks time in shepparton yep the uh, Codjalua, which is that one there, is being produced in a special colour yeah. for the event with single hooks. Is that right? Yeah, it is. And there you go. Yeah, so I just, I, it was just something I was picking up that every single thing you've put up had, had trebles on it. Yeah. Uh, so, but you don't hear anglers saying, oh, God, I'll get rid of those trebles and go to singles. Yeah, you speak of no. a bluefin tuna, for instance, and you'd have 98% of the people these days running single hooks. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But uh, and, and there's reasons. Why, so, I mean, catch and release is a big thing. And yep. to get a treble out is three yeah. times harder than a single. Do you know how to work that out? <laughs> you three oh, I was just checking if you could work out. Yeah. So it's something to do with three hooks. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, yeah, but you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the yeah. singles are used on a lot of lures, particularly when there's catch and release involved. Um, yeah. Or with Tassies, it's yeah. less weed pickup and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But it's just something that yeah. I don't hear any cod fisherman talking about it's going to singles. Very yeah. interesting. Cause you're I don't right. think your catch rate is as good with single hooks, but it's not Neither far off it. Yeah. But again, the benefits of... All those metal of, um, jigs with single assist, you know, I put them back to trebles for the kingfish because I want to I want to jag them everywhere yeah. I can. Yeah. <laughs> you don't drop one kingfish, it's no good. Flannel no shirt good. and a fillet knife. That's exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want. Up next, there you go, that was cod. Uh, up next, fisheries news, including news about fish motels. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. A little bit of news this week, boys. Mm -hmm. And it kicks off with uh, Murray Cod. People have been naughty again. Oh. Naughty oh. news again. Um, the headline is Murray Cod seized out of session. A quick call from a concerned member of the public to the 1-3 fish line yesterday, um, and this was oh, a few days ago, yeah. um, has seen four people from Cobram caught with undersized Murray cod during the close season. Regional Supervising Fisheries Officer Murray Burns said fisheries and police responded to the call. Wow, look at the police. Yeah. Uh, and Murray located the there. offenders yeah. who had been fishing for Murray cod in the Goulburn River at Shepparton. You Put go. your staff at lunchtime, Shelley. Um, <laughs> a search of their vehicle revealed three Murray Cod concealed under the mat in the boot, mm. measuring 34, 42 and 48 centimetres, mm. which is less than the minimum legal size of 55 centimetres, Mr Burns said. Mr Burns, is he off? Um, Simpsons. Simpsons, Simpsons, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be hard to do a media release and, no, you no. know, like, be serious. Yeah. But um, I saw the... Now, if you want to get it and see the photos of this, because it's ridiculous, they just <coughs> they treat these fish like crap. Mm. They were yeah. covered in dirt. They were thrown where the spare wheel goes mm. in the boot. Like, it's just... They need to be thrown yeah. like that, you know. So anyway, yeah. uh, it went on to say the cod uh, had also been taken during the closed season and none of the offenders had a fishing licence. Yeah. A triple threat. I'm <laughs> I'm out of season, no fishing. Is this your staff? I'm, no, I'm tipping a new Australian, so I'm tipping. Oh, it doesn't 
can't say that. Oh, no. uh, in the open season, the Murray Cod Daily <laughs> catch limit is one one fish in rivers and sorry, one fish in rivers and two in lakes with a size limit of 55 to 75 centimetres. All Murray Cod that are caught in the closed season, uh, under or oversized or exceed the bag limit must be returned to the water at the soonest opportunity with a minimum amount of injury or damage. So you've got so, to look after so, you're not, so you're not allowed to roll them around in the dirt and now throw them in the boot for a bit? No. no under the mat. No. Uh, you can't say yeah. that you're going to release them like, down the road in another <laughs> nah. part of the river. No. Yeah, especially that um, And this is what they're going to cop. The offenders each face fines of up to $1,087, precisely, being comprised of $155 for not having a licence, uh, $466 for having undersized Murray Cod, and four hundred and sixty-six dollars for taking Murray Cod during the closed season. Well, shouldn't all of them cop it three times? Yes. Well, they'd yes. Oh, yeah, hand th up. Three yep. of them. Yeah, three no. of them. Three of them. Yeah. And yeah. there was three fish. Yeah. Oh, they stuck to the bag. Well, limit they get one each. Yeah, they stuck oh, to the bag limit. So. Anyway, that's yeah. what one. Let's keep talking about cod, and the Murray Conference is coming up, Trelly, yep. in your hometown. It is. Uh, it's on uh, Sunday, the eleventh of December. <coughs> from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. It's at the East Bank Conference Centre, 70 Wellsford Street in Shepparton. Is that far from your shop? No, not very far. No. Stay and uh, to register, you need to email improving.fishing at ecodev.vic.gov.au or call that number on your screen right now. So an easy email just to remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or we'll put it on Facebook tomorrow so you can see yeah. it there. Um, if you can register for a free seat, registering helps uh, plan the seating and catering. And if it's anything like uh, the Trout Conference trolley, yep. I'll be eating 14 pies and 13 sausage rolls at morning <laughs> tea and yeah. uh, some lovely beverages at yeah. lunchtime and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so probably playing snakes and ladders the next day. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, no, it's good. It's, uh, get to the conference. There's a lot of good information. Like you said, is everyone going to get a free Codgelua? Oh, did I say that? I think you did. Did I? Custom colour. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you has got Target 1 million in on it. Could have. Like yeah. Could have. Go. Anyway, that's, yeah. uh, that's that bit. Um, let's keep moving along with the news. Um, the King George Whiting Larvae, Larvae, <coughs> Larvae Survey is on. Fisheries Victoria scientists are currently undertaking annual monitoring of how many King George Whiting larvae made it into the Bay's seagrass nursery areas from this winter's spawning season. Have a look at that photo on the, on the, the screen there. King George Whiting spawn in ocean waters, most likely along the southeast <coughs> coast of South Australia. This long-term monitoring has shown that when winter spring winds blow harder and more frequently from the west, more of these tiny larvae are transported into the bay. This winter spring has seen plenty mm. of westerly winds and the results of the survey so far are looking very good. This is good news for whiting anglers as these tiny fish will be ready to catch in about two years' time. Is that, yeah. that is a crack yeah. of a photo, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's growing yeah. if they're ready to catch in two years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's unreal. And, and the thing is, yeah. we've got a crack of whiting season now. Yep. Yep. They're not being netted like they were. Yeah. And so if that continues right throughout summer, these fish are going to be, I reckon, well, they're, they're certainly <coughs> there's a, a very, very big uh, amount of 37 yeah. centimetre fish in Port yeah. Phillip Bay. I'm not talking Western Port. Western yeah. Port's a little bit different, but 37 centimetre fish in Port Phillip Bay right now, they will soon be 40. You know, yeah. by March, April next year, they'll probably yeah. be 40. If they don't leave the bay, if they're comfortable um, and they don't get to spawn, we will have a really, really good class yeah. of fish still in the bay and, and plenty coming through. So why be interesting fishing. that chap that your mate who done the survey. Remember he comes in those surveys, he yeah. said those spikes yeah. <coughs> in the good fishing seasons. What will happen now with uh, the habitat being uh, left there without yeah. any and things like this going on? Yeah. Over you, Dave. We've got good fishing ahead of us. All right. Um, uh, sorry, they're yelling in my ear yeah. <laughs> to read the next one while Trelly was talking. Yeah. Uh, the next one, anglers help evaluate the effectiveness of 44 fish motels, Trelly. That. Now, that last Saturday, door. around 25 volunteer local anglers supported a community fishing day at Kangaroo Lake near Swan Hill to help evaluate the effectiveness of 44 fish motels installed in 2014. So that photo on your right yep. is a homemade fish motel. It's, it's habitat. It's what the fish hang around. And 
then the guys are fishing there. You see those yellow yeah. markers there just indicating where they are, and the guys are fishing on them. Uh, golden perch, redfin, and silver perch made up most of the angler catches, and some promising signs were also seen on the sounder around the fish motels. The evaluation will continue over the next few months as anglers record their fishing catch and effort at Kangaroo <coughs> Lake in an angler diary. Uh, if anyone wants to help out, we might put this information up on Facebook tomorrow. Uh, you want to get involved, contact Carl Mathers. Carl.Mathers at thewedgegroup.com.au. Mm. The installation of fish motels into Lakes Kangaroo and Boga, along with this evaluation, were funded by fishing licence fees. So there you go. Have you, have you guys heard about fish motels? Yep. Um, yeah. And those lakes, those lakes fish really good this time mm. of year. You get some good reports back on Redfin over there. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. It's a pretty little spot to go. Yeah. Lake Boga is the uh, home of the um, you know, the war plane, the... the, 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 the um, uh, yeah, the ones that land on water that used to do the bombing of the dams. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's the a few three to be flying tadpole. Yeah, yeah flying tadpole. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> yeah. You, you weren't even no. born there, Dad. <laughs> just sounds funny. You used to look for <laughs> sharks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we haven't spoken about the bloke who got bitten by no, a shark. No, we haven't. Oh, we'll we'll try to get to that. So but, yeah. Charlie, um, you're not, you're not, uh, you know, you, but you're pretty familiar with fish motels. Well, that style of thing, I've seen yeah. them come up before, and that's a great initiative you know, to put it's, them over there. It's just. It's just someone caught a snap of you during the week at a fish motel, and oh. uh, no, no, there you are. You're oh, you actually yeah. at the fish motel oh, that was in, in the dolphin sanctuary <laughs> down, yeah, down was, near the heads. There. That was happy. I didn't know it was that's a, too, Just another fish motel. Yeah. That, that's your license <laughs> fees at work there. Yeah. Uh, and there's a couple of there drinking schooners, mate. I know, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, they're too um, far out of the water. Those, don't know the yeah, look at, See the blonde on the right hand side too. She was yeah. drinking daiquiris. I think is that what they call them? Daiquiris. But anyway, very familiar fish motels we're told. <laughs> Up next, Kramer's mailbag, including a complaint that Coronella is too quiet. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Make mine, make mine a Mornington. G'day, David Kramer here. I'm a massive fan of the Mazda BT50, having personally driven and owned one for more than five years now. And to tell you what, you can't beat them for an all-round great ute and a great tow vehicle. Get into Mornington Mazda before the end of the month and grab yourself a run-out bargain. I made mine a Mornington Mazda. Make mine, make mine a Mornington Mazda. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. <laughs> Oh dear, the things that go on during an ad break. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes hard to control. Oh, Lucky we don't film the ad breaks, Charlie. Oh, no. uh, a bit of mailbag, here we go, let's kick it off. Hi David and crew, after your comments on the overflow of the Coronella car park, this is the complaint, it's not really a complaint, I just yeah. want to stir him up. No. This is from Pete. Uh, after your co comments uh, on the overflow of the Coronella car park on Tuesday night, I launched there on Wednesday at 7.15 a.m. The bay was calm with an offshore wind predicted in the afternoon. Great conditions. And I think we've got a photo from the car park. Uh, there were only two other trailers in the car park and one of them was the ferry skipper. You must have scared people off. Great work. <laughs> made, it easy, <laughs> made it easy for me. So Pete wants us to mention every week oh, well, we that uh, Coronella's flat out. You won't packed. get a car park because yeah, no nah. one's going there. People yeah. Coronella in the... Yeah. Well, there's... Uh, two pa car? don't two bother, cars. Don't bother going to Patterson Lakes. It's uh, it's full. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the fishing was excellent. Caught yeah. five snapper. Kept my bag of three, which was a six, a five and a half, and a two and a half, and uh, returned two about four kilos. That's unreal. On your Pete. Yeah. Well you got on your Pete. Yeah. Uh, last time yeah. we mentioned Coronella is being busy. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. uh, the next one, Matthew writes to us, Hi guys, uh, do you know if you can buy s real seats or rod grips? If you know where I can get them, let me know. Just give us a call oh, to shop. Real, we, yeah. we sell? Hey, everyone. We can get them. Oh, there you go. You build it, it's, you, mm. Rod building, I'm guess, building your own rod well, or repairing an old one? It must be. So oh, Matthew, ring, uh, give us a call. Ring Adam tomorrow, Tackle World Morning to yeah. Easy. Or Geelong, to a stack of leftover from Longy. Enough <laughs> <laughs> to build 8,000 rods. Oh, no, he's a yeah. bowbird feeding him. Yeah. I don't know where Matthew <laughs> is, but if he's over your way, ring Tackle World Geelong. Geelong. Yeah, yep. tell you what. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I was going to try and think of something smart to say about Caesar, but I can't think of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Greg, Caesar, right? Greg, <laughs> <laughs> Greg writes to us. He writes, hey guys, had a question posed to me today. Is there still trawling? Don't marry her. 
And <laughs> <laughs> is there still trawling in Port Phillip Bay? Can you answer this for me? As I know the commercial fishing industry is being phased out. <coughs> Has that happened or is there still some around? No. Cheers from Greg. Can I just put that? Yeah. The commercial fishing industry hasn't been phased out. No. It's just the netting. Yes, yeah. just, just the method, that, isn't it? It's just the long lining for snapper. Yep. yep. So there there we go. And hand lining. And, and, they, hand can, lining. and yeah. they can still do a lot of commercial fishing outside of the yeah. beautiful bay it's that we have. It's, the it's only the netting. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Uh, Greg, there is still some netters around. Uh, 43 netters were in Port Phillip Bay. 33 of them have gone. So there's 10 left, and eight of those guys will remain as a long liner after 2022, yep. I think. So uh, 10 of them could be in till 2022, where two of them will get out, and eight of them will remain just as long liners. There you go. Beautiful. That's Kramer's Mailbag. If you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you have to do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au Right, now, Trelly, a couple of subjects we wanted to cover and we've got about four minutes. The yeah. GAC Razor, the fundraiser that was on on Sunday night. It was a great night. It was. 200 people in attendance. Yep. Tell us how it went. Uh, went really well, uh, better than expected, actually. It was mm. really good. Um, Rex did the uh, the commentary. Uh, we helped out where we could, and, and uh, we had some really good stuff, funny stuff. Um, we sold uh, some ads off for, for Rex is going to do some thirty second commercials for people. Yeah. We sold off uh, Rex and I go fishing with a guy for two thousand dollars, and he's not even going to take a rod. He's just going to take his esky. Going to sit there and watch you and Rex fish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah there you go. Um, and uh, the people were very, very generous with their offers on the on the auction items, and we made a bit of a fun out of it. Took a bit of a whiz out of Gacky, which is his style, yep. and we raised. Look, I believe it would have been very, very close to. Forty-five. We're hoping fifty. We haven't quite done the numbers yet. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars out of that. So, oh, yeah, wow. so that's a fantastic effort. Well done to the industry and everyone that turned up because it was a great night. Um, Trelly, another thing coming up is obviously cod opening and yep. the rivers are very important to a lot of people. And we spoke about this last year about a dry bank event. Can you explain what a dry bank event is, and are we going to have one this year? Yes. Now, uh, I always go to uh, the chaps like Murray Goldman Water. And those who have is that control, his name? Murray Goldman Water. Uh, yeah, no, it's the uh, that's the uh, or the Broken Catchment Authority, Murray Goldman Water, yeah. because they're the people that deliver water. So they get an order through for uh, horticulture down Mildura or or water in South Australia. Yeah. They've got to deliver the water, and there's there's about five parties that make up that. So it's pretty complicated how they deliver water. Hmm. Now, uh, along with that, they, they try and piggyback some of the, some of those flows with environmental flows to give water to the banks and. Uh, and and uh, and all those areas that need to need to need so that the important thing that I put I put in the calendar and I go to these guys and I say look uh, we need a dry bank event at cod opening so historically we've had a t couple of times where they've actually dropped the water by two or three meters and you know banks are like you know when they're steep and you're Got trying West to get down with it yeah A and Z and that yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> river banks oh you probably yeah. think a current something you plug the 240 yeah. volts or two, but you know, <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I go to these people and I say, Look, this is a very important uh, Christmas, Easter, and cod opening. I yeah. want a dry bank event, so keep the level of the of the, the oh, waters keep the it same. consistent so that the bank's not wet. And when they drop exactly. the level, it's not all wet and muddy. Yeah, yeah. and they have done dry. The last, they have done the last few years, which has been really, really good. Yep. And it's going to happen again this year because we've got no environmental flows, we don't need them. We've had the floods, yeah. so this year is looking excellent. Look, the Goldman's looking excellent. Excellent. The water's clearing up. The Murray is looking excellent. Uh, we've got a few little problems with uh, downstream on the Edwards and the Nema and the Warcool. A bit of black water down there, but I think that's being attended to. It's, I think it's improving. Well, it's not going to be as bad as what we thought. Uh, it's looking fantastic up our way. So you'll be able to walk down the bank, get the kids to come down there. They're not going to get muddy boots and bits and pieces. It's yeah. looking really, really good. All right, next subject, a black water event, because there's people writing to us saying yeah. uh, there's been a black water event. There's dead Murray cod everywhere. Is that true? Uh, I haven't witnessed it first up, and I'll make, I can only tell you what's come to me secondhand. Um, we've had fish kills in the uh, Warcool River, uh, the name of the Edwards, and they all in turn flow back into the Murray River. So we have had some fish kills uh, in those areas. Yep. Uh, they have been trying to run water down through different spots like the Mulwala Canal and bring it in and trying to flush some uh, some oxygenated water through that. Uh, 
Look, I don't know the management situation, but I think they've dodged a bullet downstream yeah. as far as that sort of uh, poisoning the water downstream. So does downstream. somewhere like Mulwala get affected by that? <clears throat> no, it's only the, it's the Barma Choke. So what they call a Barma Choke is you've got the Murray River comes down and joins with the Goulburn, and that historically can only take, let's say it's 10 gallons of water through there. Yeah. If you're trying to push 15 gallons of water through there or 12 gallons of water through there, it, bag, it backs up, it backs up, even up to Shepparton. Yeah. So, I and think then you it explained goes this two weeks ago, but I slept yeah, through it. So. That's all right. Yeah, I'll probably get <laughs> Goes through the bush, yeah, the, 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 takes oxygen out of the water, it finally gets through and put, yeah, okay. So, no, no, yeah. I'm, I'm you know, interested this no, time. No, it finally gets through, but it gets through as water with no oxygen in it, yeah. basically. Yeah, so, and that's what causes causes yeah. the fish kill. So, so. Is, is, is there an answer to that? You know, like, um, or is it just something natural that's yeah, always going to happen? Look, look, I, dodged? Yeah, look, I, I, I do question, I do question water management. Yeah. Uh, but I can't pinpoint figures because we get we're getting we had guys come on there last week saying about pumping water into some of the forests, you know, to give the, the forest a drink. Yeah. I think I think we overthink it sometimes. They can be dry for ten years or, or whatever and then they'll get a flush. You look back on history before white man was here mm. and they would have went a, a huge periods of time probably without water. Mm. Where I think we're trying to overthink it and do too much. They wouldn't sometimes. have had to ring the chaps at Murray Gold and water, would they no. back in those days That's to right. say we got like a black water. Call. We've got a <laughs> <laughs> we've got a black water event coming. That's right, yeah. They wouldn't have ever known, would they? Yeah. In fact, they probably looked up and saw a yeah. black cockatoo and thought it was going to rain. Yeah, yeah. A smoking ceremony and that's, make a trunk call. That's exactly yeah. right. There you go. Coming up, this week's hot spots next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day. Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramming. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my body. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Get on them, it's where the fish are. I think we have some fair weather coming up this weekend too, boys, so yep. hotspots like. are going to be hotly contested. <coughs> Is there a typo there, Dave? I don't see Coronella right there. No, there's no <laughs> Coronella. No, it's not going to be busy there, so don't, don't go to don't Coronella. No, won't, no, be busy. Sure. won't be busy at all. No. Uh, let's kick it off. Number one, Corio Bay Inner Harbour Trelly is yep. still fishing sensationally for Big Snapper. Yep. And I think it's got something to do. I was talking to Chris uh, from Tackle World Geelong yep. in the car on the way to Gackies on Sunday, and he was just saying the remarkable amount of silver whiting mm -hmm. that are in Corio Bay. And I said, is that normal? He goes, not that I know of. Yeah. You yeah, know, that's so pretty cool. That's right. Where are these silver whiting? They're just all of a sudden. Mm. There's yeah. like that, absolutely thousands. Or there's yeah. two well, we guys saw that got old mate that took a thousand. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, but that's brought the, the, the big snapper in. And yeah. so any of the land-based options on in in the inner harbour of Cryo Bay is fishing very, very well. Yeah, that's some great reports. Like yeah. to say. Yeah. Over the other side of the bay, Black Rock uh, is just seems to be the capital. I think that warmer water is mm -hmm. uh, starting to heat up a little bit on the northern end of the bay, and mm -hmm. certainly Black Rock's heading up towards that northern end, <coughs> and there's been some cracker fish. You don't have to go out far there. No, if you sit in 12, if, 13 metres of water. Yeah, if you yeah. have never, ever caught a snapper or pinky snapper or anything on soft plastics, do yourself a favour and go and grab yourself a packet, head down to Black Rock and mm. fish in, they said 10 to 12, you don't even have to go far, it could be 6 metres of water. It's the most fun you'll ever have. Mm. What would your number one plastic be? Uh, 85 mil flick bait, pillion. Yep, yep cool. <laughs> Over to Western Port and Hastings is absolutely fantastic at the moment. Some big fish sitting there. Fish deep. Yep. You always fish deep off Hastings. <laughs> so, um, And just get your tides right. A, a good run-in tide seems to be really good at the moment. And some big fish up to eight kilos off Hastings. Let's head over to Real now on uh, Phillip Island there and some fantastic fishing over there. If you want to be a little bit offshore, there's some great snapper, but the calamari on the weed beds and the King George oh, whiting yeah. from over there is just Ooh, sensational. Get excited, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great time here because we are now, we are now at turnover time. Yeah, yeah. People, yep. that, that, even though it hasn't been great for snapper, it's, it's yep. been, there's been some great fish but the weather has not been good for snapper yeah. fishing. Mm -hmm. People are starting to turn over. It's getting to summer, 
Uh, it's time for King George Whiting. It's time to have a good feed. And they, won't nice disappoint. they won't disappoint. They won't like no, the snapper. No. The Whiting won't disappoint. No, both yeah, Western Port. Be ready. Ooh. <laughs> both Western Port and Port Phillip <laughs> starting to fire in King George Whiting. Let's head up uh, north of the state and Lake Marwala is the place to be this weekend. It is the Cod Classic. Yep. Uh, 3,000 anglers will be trekking. Uh, in fact, yep. many of them heading up you know, midweek this week. I mean, it's uh, getting ready, setting up the tents and into it on Thursday. Yeah, right. Right. And if you're not sure Pretty what it was to take, five of the best in product of the week, keep yeah. up to date on Facebook all yeah, week absolutely. and make sure you've got at least yeah. one of each of them. Yeah. So very, very big weekend in Mawala, but all the cod places will be firing. And the other place that you should never forget because we fought hard to get every boat on that we could, Blue Rock Lake. The bass are Ooh. just on fire. Mm. This gets there. me excited, Charlie. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I've used all my woo-woos, but <laughs> yeah, oh, I'll get the cicada <laughs> invitations out, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dusk. Yeah, oh. yeah bass in, in shallow water yeah. too, yep. I'm told. So. The trouble is, like, where, where are you going to pick this weekend? I know. Everything's going. I know. It's, it's all just come on at once. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yabbies are even starting to catch yeah. yabbies in some spots. You know? And we're so Pretty close, on. so close to telling you about Hazelwood. We just can't. We just can't. Yet. Yet. <laughs> there is a hold-up. But anyway, I, look, you know, there's just some technical things about... Well, the right way. Can't even give us a little, you know, no. like uh, not allowed. <laughs> not allowed. Nothing. Not allowed. It'll open soon. That's I'll all get you on a drink later on. You'll tell me. I'll tell you, but yeah, yeah but um, no, no, right no it's very, very, very close. So yeah. anyway, that's it. Um, that's hot spots. Yeah. Now, boys, something uh, Jeff Stock sent to me last night. Stocky is that the water has stopped flowing into Tolondo. Mm-hmm. Not sure why. I've been trying to find out why today, but. Uh, just well, how, how long were they expecting it? How long well, was it going to take to get the 10 gig in there? Yeah, I thought that yeah. was going to stop about 1st of December because I think they have a, a bit of a policy around um, it, when you get into summer, the evaporation rate's quite high yep. in the channel. So it may have to do with that, but I, I, I couldn't get any answers today out of all the people I spoke mm. to. Um, but I think it might be that the 10 megs is now in. I could be wrong, yep. mm. but I think the 10 megs was, was um, promised. And I've got a feeling it's in. Now, whether whether Tolano's entitled to more than that, I'm not sure. I don't know how that works. But well, but yeah, it will all depend on Rocklands. Yeah, but Rocklands, <coughs> I think in Stockies, I'm doing it by memory, uh, Stockies message to me was that I think Rocklands is at 155,000 meg mm -hmm. and at the trigger point's 116. Okay, so, so, so you've got the right story to ask. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know what the rules are around mm. how so much... as a percentage, what's Tolondo as a percentage for? 33. Oh, so it's oh, not that okay. full. So yeah. it's still so low. Still low. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot yeah. of the lakes in that district are full. Yeah. Like they're, they're 100%. Yeah. I right. think there's a lot of lakes. So should more be put into Tolondo from Rocklands? I don't know. I don't know how the rules work. Mm. Um, we will find out for next Tuesday, definitely, because uh, Tolondo is a hot topic. And yes. You know what? I... I, I mm. Went to the golf on Sunday with the Premier. Mm. Um, I was in the uh, just at a function with him, yep. and uh, he said to me, "David, do you know what the number one issue that he gets stopped in the street about? Mm. The number one thing that fishermen praise him for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, what you did for Tolondo.' Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, and, and remember, yeah. they were only uh, yep. Labor came into power, I think, in the November, and in mid January they put that five thousand meg in, right. which really did save Tolondo because if it hadn't yeah. got that five meg. The, it away. would have gone dry yeah. and we'd be in a phase now with all this water that we'd be put, putting yearlings in or something, you know, yeah. trying to rebuild it. So those fish got through. But it, the Premier said to me, the mm. number one thing that people mm. talk to him about in the street, and he said the other day was, he was at Springvale. Someone said, yeah. oh, good on you, what you did for Tolondo. Yeah. You know, oh, well, so, Mr uh, Premier, have a look at old Rocklands there and see if we can get another yeah. trigger point worth of water. Yeah, need to, yeah, <laughs> need need to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Trelly, um, mm. locally... Yep. Where would you be going cod fishing this weekend? If you don't want to go all the way to Marwala, don't want to do oh, Eildon because Eildon's been done and, and yep. they tell me the water skiers are breeding there in their millions. Uh, yep. yeah. Where would you go? Where, where would your favourite oh, spot be this weekend? It's, it's probably a little bit hard because it's just firing all at once. Like We've just, yeah. we've just taken the state Well, where do the local spots? people at Shepparton go? So when snapper season rolls up, we all head to either Coronella or we head yeah. to Carum. Where, where do uh, the people at Shepparton, Shepparton where, do they, where do they go to catch cod? Oh, look, they'd probably go up to Murray. 
Um, oh, do they? Yeah, yeah a lot of them will, will go to the Murray. I think it's just uh, scenic wise, it's just a lovely river. I, I, it is it really bigger is a fish river. than the Golden, or is it the same? No, nah, pretty much the same. Yep. Yeah, so access is probably a little bit better. Yep. Um, but yeah, look around the Golden, around Shepherd, there's heaps and heaps of access from uh, Murchison right down to Shepparton, which is some really good spots. And, uh, you know, Cobram, Yarrawonga. Um, Strathmerton, your Lapner Island, those sorts of areas are just lovely places to be. Yeah. yeah. Would you be lure fishing this early? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah, you can you can see quite quite some depth into the water. Yeah. Awesome. Really good. Where where does the Barty grub sit this time of year? The Barty grub. Yeah. Is that in, is a, in the, the food the, chain on the end of a five? No, 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 are, are, <laughs> yeah. are they seasonal? The Barty grub seasonal? They're, yeah, you know, well, yeah, they usually get them around about sort of March, April, May. Yeah. Um, and then we've got to sort of hold on them and something. Yeah, okay. But they yeah. usually sit on the end of the hook, <laughs> seasonally. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, this time of year, you, you were a little bit past the bait coming out. So we are uh, we sort of going bait, but we are uh, probably more lures and spinner baits and things like that working the structure. So, yeah. I saw a picture of a lure today that looked like a blue tongue lizard. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you seen them? Oh, I've not seen the same one, but there's some cool. weird stuff. There's great stuff out there. There's some, and they're big. It's, yeah. Is cod fishing lures lures getting bigger? Oh yeah, absolutely. You've seen uh, well, come at, the co- at the conference, uh, you know, those uh, wake baits are up to you know this big, you know, fourteen uh, inches long or yeah. you know, three hundred sixty mil long. Wow. Far out. Sit your stone at the water. Real big presence. Great. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's it for Talking Fishing. We hope you enjoyed the show. Good luck to all the competitors in this weekend's Cod Classic at Malwala, as well as all of you just heading out in search of a mighty Murray Cod as the season opens. Some calm weather forecast for the bays this weekend too. We hope you can get out and enjoy it. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking Fishing, Talking Fishing, nothing but fishing, we're Talking Fishing. We got all you need, just take a look Watch those fish jump on your hook So just relax and take your time Enjoy the show, then drop us a line Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Talking fishing Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.